Today's number is 1.4%. That's where inflation is if we back out mortgage interest costs like most countries do when calculating CPI. And that's the lowest inflation number that we've seen since early 2021. July 24th is the next Bank of Canada rate announcement and I'm predicting another drop along with several more drops this year. There's been a lot of confusion lately about inflation and the surprise hot reading from May, but it wasn't actually higher. They just changed how they calculate it. Given the new higher weight on the mortgage interest component, it means that more of the reported inflation is attributed to the input that the Bank of Canada has direct control over. That 2.7% reading breaks down 1.24% mortgage interest costs and 1.43% everything else. Is inflation really what's keeping the Bank of Canada from dropping rates or is it more likely the soft employment data? Consider the latest business outlook survey which factors heavily into the Bank of Canada decision making which just showed the most rapid loosening in the labor market conditions since 2009. And that's just the latest example of a labor market that's clearly losing momentum. I have a very unpopular opinion that the Bank of Canada isn't looking at the new data the way that they should be, and that rates could be coming down a lot faster than we originally thought. It wasn't that long ago that markets were expecting one rate cut in all of 2024. Now markets are pricing in four cuts this year, including the one that we had in June. All of a sudden, the call for one to 1.5% of cuts isn't so far fetched. And I still think that the market will come around by the end of summer. There are a few important factors for everyone to know and monitor if you're rate sensitive or waiting for rates to come down. Firstly, employment and finances. Canada's labor market is now completely unable to keep up with the unhinged population growth. It's the largest population increase in 66 years, a staggering sudden jump. We are growing at about four times the uh, historic rate. In the same year the country's population crossed the 40 million mark, the additional number of people living here between July and September is up by more than 430,000. The majority of newcomers aren't permanent residents yet. The employment rate fell by 0.2% last month and is broken below the great financial crisis numbers. Private sector payrolls fell by 28K and that's the steepest decline since the public health lockdowns in 2021. New data from Paynet shows a sharp increase in small business loan delinquencies in Canada as of April. The share over 90 day delinquency loans has now surpassed the highest seen in the financial crisis. I get all the flack for these predictions and so many people think that we need to mirror the US. Our economies are intertwined, but we're in a much worse position. Americans had a very tough housing bubble that caused a financial crisis. That taught them a lesson. Canadians haven't seen pain like that and our market is more leveraged and our GDP is not as strong. We can't ignore the impact of international trends. Central banks around the world, including the US Federal Reserve, have been adopting a more dovish stance, which usually results in lower interest rates. The US economy is showing signs of softening, which has historically led to lower interest rates globally. All right, quick pause on this video. Listen, before I say anything, this isn't coming from me, this is coming from the entire team. We need more subs. A lot of our viewers are still not subscribed. So please like, share, and comment below on the type of content that you'd like to see next. Canada's not immune to these global trends. If major economies are reducing their rates, the Bank of Canada might follow suit to maintain competitive currency rates and trade balances. The economy and small businesses aren't doing well, and these numbers might only get worse. Secondly, if we want to look at large markets that have heavy leverage and debt, Toronto's a great example of where the economy's at. Seasonally adjusted, sales across the GTA did manage to tick up 4.5% month over month, breaking a string of four consecutive months of deep Declines, but that just left them at the lowest level of any June since 2000. And that still puts them down at 60.5% year over year with the condo segment down almost 30%. It's so easy to forget that these aren't just investors or foreign buyers. These are families that are now underwater and hurting. We get so many comments about not leveraging and not getting into debt. I have $30,000 in credit card debt. But it's easy to say when you don't live in a market like that. When your entire market rips for years on end, you can't time it, nobody can. A lot of first time home buyers and families purchased and now they're facing increased rates or depreciation. 
and a lot of them may not be able to afford their home or even just closing on the property. We are seeing a similar trend in Vancouver. Home sales in Vancouver ticked up 1.2% month over month in June, but that's following a 7% decline in May. Overall, they're down 19% year over year and remain 30% below a decade average. Alberta and the rest of Canada aren't immune to what's happening in the market. We've seen things flatten out and real estate prices aren't surging like they were, but we are seeing stability and a continued inflow of people moving to the province. History often repeats itself and we can learn a lot from the economic cycles. During the 2008 financial crisis, the Bank of Canada aggressively cut rates to help the economy recover. We saw the same thing during the COVID lockdowns and we're seeing similar conditions now. We're actually seeing worse conditions now by some metrics pointing towards the need for lower rates to support growth and stability right now. If there was a checklist to determine whether rates should come down, it would probably look like this. Lower inflation, check. Lower employment numbers, check. Small businesses struggling, check. Canadian household savings approaching near record low levels, check. I know it's not that easy and there are a lot of factors that change monthly, but we should be expecting rate cuts almost every single meeting. And I'm gonna stick to my previous prediction where we will see a 1% cut by the end of the year.